Okay, so after our little stutters there. Um, so basically this presentation is going to be of benefit to anyone who um, either doesn't have access to conformance software for the My Health Record or wants to access My Health Record for patients while you're in a mobile setting. It actually still can be a benefit to people who might um, have access to conformance software because you can actually manage all aspects of your access to the My Health Record program, including downloading NASH certificates through Proda now. So it really hopefully will help everybody. Uh, my name is Nerida, as you saw earlier on the screen when all you could see was my name. And I'm one of the pharmacy engagement officers with Essential and Eastern Sydney PHN. So tonight I'm going to discuss how to register for a healthcare provider identifier organisation, which is also known as an HPIO, and also how to link this to your individual healthcare provider identifier. That's called your HPII. And so then you can access my health record for your patients. I recently got told by the Digital Health Agency that this whole process of registering should take eight minutes. So if all goes to plan, uh, you might be able to even get registered tonight as you follow along with the webinar and as we go through the steps. So if you do have questions tonight, um, and some of you already have been using the chat box, thank you very much. You can type any questions in via the chat box and we will um, do our best to get to those. And we will also have some time at the end of the presentation this evening to ask some questions. I think most of you have seen where the uh, presentation, where the chat box is, but if you can't see it on your screen, there should be somewhere as shown above with that black box and uh, there's a little chat icon there. Uh, you can click onto that. Any messages that you send will only come through to me. Uh, they won't go to the, all of the participants. So if possible, we were just hoping to start off, if everybody could just type into that chat box your name and uh, what practice you're from. And we wanted to just get a list of um, the attendees so we have the right information. So if everybody doesn't mind doing that. Lovely, thank you. They're coming through to me. Okay, so just really briefly to talk about what My Health Record is, it is a federal government initiative. And the idea is that by the end of this year, each individual in Australia will have a My Health Record made for them unless they choose not to. It is an opt out program. That electronic record is going to be controlled by the patient and it will control, it will contain a summary of their key health information. So it's quite important to know that it is not every progress note that a doctor has ever written, but it's more just those key health information pieces. So some of the information which might be uploaded to a patient's My Health Record includes a shared health summary, which can be uploaded by the patient's regular GP, the dispensing records from any prescriptions, and that includes PBS prescriptions or private prescriptions, or potentially even something that was bought over the counter, but if it is dispensed through the pharmacy system, all of those records can appear if they're dispensed by a pharmacy in Australia who is registered for My Health Record. There will also be pathology reports, hospital discharges, and specialist letters. So really quite, or potentially quite valuable information for a lot of um, allied health practitioners or really any healthcare practitioner when they're treating a patient. So the patient's My Health Record can be accessed by their treating health practitioner when appropriate during the course of having a treatment or being seen by the practitioner. 
So for your patients, you might be able to check their My Health record if you needed to during a consultation. Uh, an example might be if you need to check what medications they're currently on, maybe even to see have they had those medications you think they're on, have they had them dispensed recently, and you may also want to look at pathology or imaging reports if they're available. I guess that's just the basics on what my health record actually is. Um, the majority of tonight's webinar is really just focusing on how to register an organisation, including sole trader health practitioners, for access to the My Health Record program, and also how to link up practitioners to an organisation and using Proda to do this. So if you require any more detailed information about my health record generally, um, please just contact us here at Central and Eastern Sydney PHN and I'm sure some of our team can assist you. Uh, the best way is probably to email the email address that you registered tonight, but that is myhealthrecord at cesspen, C-E-S-P-H-N dot com dot au and then your inquiry will be passed along to uh, whichever member of the team is appropriate to help you. Okay, so I've already talked a little bit about these HPIOs and HPIIs, and they are important for you to know what these numbers are and what they represent. Basically, to, or in order to access a patient's My Health Record, you need to be familiar with what these numbers are, these identifying numbers and the abbreviations. So, an HPIO, that is the healthcare provider identifying organisation and that will tell you where the service was provided. It can be anywhere, might be a hospital, might be a medical practice, um, could be provided by the organisation as a sole trader actually in the patient's home, but it will basically identify which organisation provided the service. And then each individual practitioner will have already been assigned an HPII if you are ARPRA registered. It's linked to the ARPRA registration. It's not your registration number. Um, and we're gonna talk a bit about those later on. However, if you're not an ARPRA registered health practitioner, you can still get an HPII. Uh, you just have to go about it in a slightly different way. So we will talk about that a little bit later on as well. And the third number that is important is the individual's healthcare identifier. And that says who received the service. That number is linked to the patient's Medicare number. And the idea is that when we have all these three numbers, they all link together and give us an idea of what happened in that healthcare event. And that's how it can get uploaded into the My Health Record. So for Proda Access, hopefully many of you might already have a Proda account and that will make this process even easier to register for the My Health Record. Um, if you're using, if you're a provider for NDIS or if you have already been claiming through the DVA, it's quite likely you'll already be using Proda. If you don't have a Proda account currently, it's not particularly difficult to get one. Um, basically, you log on to the Department of Human Services website and look for the PROTA link. And you need to provide proof of your identity, uh, similar to a 100 point identity check for a bank. So you will need to have with you identity documents such as your passport or your driver's license or your Medicare card. You don't have to have copies of those, but you will need to know the numbers to enter them into the registration process so that Proda can identify you. The other thing, if you're going to register for a Proda account, that you will need is any of your individual professional identifiers. So that could be your APRA registration number. It might be a provider number if you have one. So um, if you're going to register for the first time for Proda, make sure you have all of those things together. 
And just please note that usually the Proder account is opened in your own name. Um, so this is explaining how to do your own Proder account, not for an organisation. Once we've got Proda all set up, you log in. There is a usual two-step process for that. Um, so you will get a code generally sent through to your telephone or email, whatever you've nominated. Once you log in, the home screen looks something like what is there on the screen in front of you. Even though it might say my health record, before you can actually access this, we need to get you registered and we need to make sure that your individual HPII is linked to an organisation, an HPIO. Even if you work for yourself as a sole trader of some type, you still actually need to register yourself as an organisation and then link your individual number to your organisation number, even though they might both be in your name. If you work for an organisation and you want to get them registered for accessing the My Health Record program, it is currently you will need to be the owner of the business or the principal health practitioner within that practice to be able to do this yourself via PRODA. If you're working for an organisation that's not yet registered for an HPIO and you're not the owner or the principal of that practice, um, you might consider having a chat with the owner about getting the organisation registered. And again, if you need any help with that, or if you'd like any staff from Sespen to come out and assist you, please just give us a, an email or a call. Okay, so if we're all ready to get registered today, if you've got your proto open and you're wanting to go on and, and register your organisation, basically you click onto the Health Professional Online Service or HPOS tile, which is circled there in red. That takes you to this screen the home page for the HPOS services. Sometimes some of these screens might look a little bit different on your own PRODA. It might depend how many different services you are currently registered for. From here, you just click onto the big blue My Programs box. And again, something like this will come up. And this one can vary quite a lot depending on what programs the organisation is um, registered for but you need to find the tile which says My Health Record System Organisation Registration and click through onto that. The first thing that you will need to enter is the ABN or the ACN for the organisation. As I said before, it could be a large organisation or company, it could be the ABN for a sole trader. Um, for example, an accredited pharmacist or anyone really who's uh, working for themselves would fall under this category uh, as a sole trader and can register themselves as an organisation. As I said before, if you're going to register the organisation, you do need to be the owner or the principal health practitioner. The reason being that there could be some issues with um, the Department of Human Services not recognising the person who's registering if you aren't the owner. If you are the owner of the business and you want to then say, well, I don't want to do the admin, I want to add my manager to access um, administration of the registration, you can do this a little bit later on. I'll show you that as it comes up. And this is called adding an OMO or an organisation maintenance officer. So the OMO can access details like linking up uh, different individuals who work for your company or otherwise they might remove staff if they've left the company. So the OMO can do a lot of the admin things but they don't have the same access to the My Health Record program as the owner or what is known as the responsible officer. When you do enter your ABM and you click submit, a screen something like this will come up. 
It doesn't look exactly like this in the current version of Proda, but it's similar. Some of the information on your own might be pre-populated because it can be linked to your ABN. Um, so it might be that the business address is already there or something like that. But basically you just need to um, check through everything and make sure that the details are correct. Obviously if something's incorrect, you need to update that information. You do need to choose from those drop down boxes where it says organisation type. You'll need to um, put in what, what organisation, like what type of health professional you are. There's a number of boxes on there that you need to fill in their mandatory information. So you need to fill in all of those before you continue on to putting in the responsible officer or RO details, which is the next tab along. Uh, on this one, on this picture, it shows that there's a submit or a cancel only, but there actually should be a next. So in your, when you're registering your own organisations, it should say next, and you would click onto next to go to the RO details. Again, as I was just mentioning about the OMO details, you can see here, this is where you would be able to add an OMO as well. And that can be quite useful for some organisations. It's not compulsory, you don't have to have an OMO, but it certainly might be reasonable if you have a business manager or an administration manager. The OMO doesn't actually have to be a registered health professional necessarily. And the reason is that they will have access to administrative type tasks, but they won't have access to patient records if they don't have their own PII. So this uh, slide shows the screen a little bit more like it actually looks like. Um, so as you can see, you've filled out the organisation details, you would then go on to the RO details, and this is for the individual owner or principal practitioner in the organisation. You just fill this in. It might be that this is actually no different to the organisation information, but if there needs to be any changes, you can put that in. If you already know your HPII, you can enter those there as well. But even if you do that, we're still going to have to do another step later on and link up the two identifying numbers. Once you've filled in all those details, if you wanted to, you could put your OMO details in as well. And then basically you will submit the information. It does give you a chance to review your application before you complete your submission. And that's pretty much it for trying to register the organisation. Um, once you've done that, you submit it, and now you just wait for notification that the application has been approved. And this comes here to the Proda Messages um, box. So like I said earlier, I got told recently that this actually should only take eight minutes. I'm not 100% sure if that's correct, but if it does come that quickly, you might be quite happy to wait online and wait for your notification. Obviously, if you don't want to wait, you don't have to, you just wait for that email. If you don't want to log into Proda a lot to have to check your message box, uh, what you can do is you can click into messages and then you can update your settings. It is possible to update those email settings so that you get the messages sent to an alternate email address as well as the Proda message box. And that basically is you click into messages, then you go to settings and you update your email press, um, preferences. So hopefully as you can see there, that's where you can see that it says to select the settings icon to update the mail center email notifications. Once you've received that email, it says you have been approved for your HPIO. If you click into the email, it will tell you what the 16 digit identifying number is. It's very important that you do make a record of that number because you're gonna need it 
to link up later on. And so now what we need to do is link up your individual HPII to that HPIO. So you need to know what your HPII is at this point. So for people who are APRA registered, if you don't have that number or you don't remember it, you can basically call APRA. The phone number to phone them up is 1300 361 457. Oh, sorry, that's, that's actually the healthcare identifier number. The APRA number is 1300 419 495 or the other number I just said, healthcare identifiers line, you can also phone that to find out your HPII and that number is 1300 361 457. If you know your APRA ID, which is not your registration number, but it's the 10 digit number that you usually would use to log, log in online when you update your registration. If you happen to know that number, you can also use that and add 800361 to the beginning of your ARPA ID, and that actually gives you your HPII. So all HPIIs are 16 digits, and they all start with 800361. As I said before though, you don't have to be an APRA registered professional. If you're a member of a health profession that doesn't fall under national registration through APRA, but does have a national professional organisation, so this certainly includes dietitians and speech pathologists, and there may be other professions, I'm not quite sure, uh, you still can be eligible for an HPII. And basically to do that, you have to just fill in a form that goes to the Department of Human Services. So you can find that application form on the DHS website, or if you'd like to, please contact us and we can send you through that application form. Now to link up your HPIO and your HPII, there's just a couple more steps. You go back to the HPOS homepage, go back to My Programs, and this time you're going to go to My Health Record System Organisation Registration, which is circled there on the slide. Click onto that. Should come up like this, and you will click onto Manage Authorisation Links. Once you click through there, a page like this comes up. So this page lets you link any healthcare provider or contracted service provider to your organisation. You might find that if you've already been linked to any organisation, um, maybe if you, for example, work at a hospital, uh, the, you might already be linked, um, you might have already been linked to that hospital organisation. So it is possible to have quite a number of registered organisations listed there. Obviously, if you're trying to link your own HPII to your HPIO that you just registered, you just need to make sure that you select the appropriate organisation and then click onto that uh, link there that says update, add or update links. If you are the owner of a larger organisation, you can use this step to link all of your employees if you want to, but you will need to know each person's individual HPII. And you can also use this uh, link here if you want to remove people from your organisation if they're no longer working with you. And all of that admin is quite important for my health record. It's, it's very important that you keep proper records of who's working for you at what time, because all of this information will go onto a patient's My Health record, and you want to minimise the risk of anyone inappropriately accessing a My Health record. Once we clicked on the Add or um, Update link, as you can see where the circle is there, you can just add a new individual by entering their HPII. 
the arrow shows you where you can deactivate. So in this example, that's my own Froda. Um, so if I wanted to deactivate myself and remove myself from my organization, I would just click on the deactivate link. And once that's all completed, we're now ready. We are finished with our linking and our registering, and we can now access the My Health Record portal via Proda. The only thing is you have to log out and log back in again. There doesn't seem to be a way to get back to the very first homepage. You can, if you wanted to, um, access the My Health Record through the portal page. So that is portal .ehealth.gov.au. But if you go to that page, you'll see as on this screen, it then just says login with Proda or login with Nash, and you'd click onto Proda, which takes you back to the Proda website. Otherwise, you can just go to the Proda login by yourself and then log in. So when you do log in, this something like this screen. Again, there can be more tiles available if you have more services, but you want to look at the My Health Record tile. So you click onto My Health Record. Now I did say that you'd be finished, but the very first time that you access My Health Record through Proda, you do have to link again your HPII. You only ever have to do this once, um, but if you haven't done those previous steps that we just went through, and then you just try to link your HPII here, it actually won't work. It won't allow you to continue. If you have updated and linked your HPII, the first time you just enter it here again, and click on next, and it should work for you. Come through to a screen something like this, so if your individual HPII has been linked to more than one organisation, and in this particular example, um, this individual looks like they work at a few different hospitals and imaging places. If in that case, each time you access the My Health Record program, you need to select the organisation for which you're accessing it. So where your patient currently is from. Obviously, if you're wanting to wish, if you're wanting to access the record while you're treating a patient from Croydon Health Service, you would click onto that first one and then click through to confirm. It's very important that you do ensure that you access the portal under the correct organisation. The reason for this is that every patient will be able to see a log of who has accessed their My Health record. And if you accidentally selected a different hospital or a different organisation, it might mean the patient thinks that there's been some inappropriate access. If, if they don't go to that hospital, they will wonder why that hospital is looking at them. It can be quite, um, quite an issue and it could lead to penalties. So please ensure that you always select the correct organisation when you are looking at a patient's My Health record. And then you come to this one. So this is basically the search for My Health Record patient information. You need to know the patient's name or really just their last name for the portal, their date of birth, their gender, and usually you'd either need their Medicare number or their DVA number. If you happen to know their IHI, that, that can be used as well. But generally it would be more likely that you would have the Medicare or DVA. You enter that information in, hit search, and you come up with something like this. This shows you the patient's details. Uh, again, as you can see there on the slide, there's an overview of health record. You can choose to look at certain clinical documents. There's even potentially consumer documents. If the patient has put in information about allergies or so on, the medicine record will show, uh, usually show a full list of medications. There's vaccinations available, there's allergies, there's advanced care planning. So there usually is quite a lot of useful information that may be able to be accessed for your patient.
The only other thing I guess to point out on that screen, obviously if you're looking at a patient's record and you finish looking at that record, you do need to close the record. You, you shouldn't leave that open on your computer for someone else to look at. On this slide, you can see you need to press the close record, the red arrow button, if you want to look at another patient afterwards. The reason being, if you press the log out where the blue arrow is there on the screen, you actually will completely log out of Proda. And so you'll then have to go through the whole login process again. So would recommend that you do the close record first and then look up any other patients and log out at the end of the session. So that concludes the webinar for this evening. Um, I hope it was of some benefit. <laughs> and please, does anyone have any questions? If they'd like to ask any questions, just type them into the chat box if you do. Oh, yes, someone's just asked if we can, if you can have the slides. Yes, we've been recording the um, webinar tonight, so we can certainly provide that to, to you. Um, either the whole webinar or probably just the slides, whichever you prefer, and that will be fine. We can send that through. Okay, so yes, if the question is, I work in a group practice, but we are all sole traders. So can we all register HPIOs individually? I believe yes. If you are a sole trader, if you have your own ABN and your own provider number or, or whatever, there should be no reason that you couldn't register yourself individually. You may also be able to register as a practice, as a group practice, it's up to you. Um, but yeah, you should be able to register individually. The other thing, I mean, if anyone at all um, would like to know any more, wants any of us to come out and go through any of that again, or would like assistance with anything, that's fine, please contact us. Uh, as I did briefly mention earlier, uh, you actually now can download your NASH PKI certificate through Proda. There will eventually be no more CDs sent out to anybody. So if you need any assistance with that, we're very happy to help out with that as well. Um, this slide here at the very end has our contact details. And yeah, please feel free to email us or phone us up for any assistance. And hopefully we'll see some new registrations for the uh, for, using, for using my health record because it really has the potential to be really useful for a lot of people in their practice, I think. Okay, well, I think if there's no more questions, I don't want to shut anyone off, but... Oh, okay, sorry, someone's just said they're registered for Proda, but they don't have the My Health Record box. That is a very good question. I don't know um, why that would be. I might have to chase that up with Proda and I have your details here somewhere. I can, yep, I'll be right. Um, so yeah, I will have to find out why that is. I'm sorry, I don't know what the answer to that question is because as far as I knew, everybody had a My Health Record box um, when they registered for Proda. But I'll, I'll chase that one up and I will try to email you. Anything else? Thanks everyone. Well, thank you for tuning in. And uh, I do apologize again for my earlier problems with the technology. Um, but yes, I will be sending the video out for everybody, all the slides. So if you, and also I think you probably will receive a survey tomorrow just to um, give us any feedback and to make sure that what you found out was of use to you. Thanks very much. I'll sign you all out now. Thanks, bye.